Hey, how's it going? It's Ollie here. Very warm welcome to another episode of Niche Spotlight. So in today's video, we're going to be analyzing the Stroller Sun Shade Niche. And as usual, I have my handy smash hit product analysis cheat sheet, which we will be using to break down the niche and just have a little look at whether this product is going to be a good opportunity or not. So let's have a look at the niche. First thing we always want to analyze when we're looking at a niche is the demand levels. If we go back to the smash hit product radar, which is the process I use to analyze all the products uh, I look at on Amazon. High demand is the number one thing we want. We want to find products that are selling well already so we can enter into a marketplace where there's already money. Customers are already, you know, evidently spending money so we can get some of that cash, right? So does the product have high demand? Well, let's have a little look. We want there to be at least three sellers making 3K a month. So let's have a little look. I've opened up AMZ Scout using the Chrome extension uh, on this niche. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sellers making at least 3K a month in this niche. So very black and white really, isn't it? It meets the criteria. So yes, this product certainly has high demand. In fact, the number one bestseller right now it's doing £83,000 a month. That's pretty, pretty incredible, if you ask me. So yes, there's definitely high demand. What about low competition? We really want five or less established sellers, sellers with 500 reviews or more. And we want there to be no massive brand in the uh, search results. Ideally, right? These, this is the ideal circumstance. Can you launch a product with more than five established sellers and with a brand in the niche? Yeah, you can. You can do it successfully, but this is the ideal situation. Let's have a look. So I've sorted by reviews. One, two, three, four, five established sellers, and there's no more. So there's five or less. So that's good. Is there any brand that I can recognize in the uh, niche well I don't know if any of these brands are massively uh, well known you know I don't see I don't know if mother care has their own brand for example that's like one of the only baby brands I know these most of these look like private label products being offered by individual sellers right they don't look like really 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 big brands who have offered this product so it seems to me like there's no big brands uh, in the marketplace. Now, there might be some brands that are quite big that I just don't know because I'm not a customer in this. I don't have a kid, right? Um, however, there's no really massively identifiable national brands in this niche. So I'm going to put no for now. What you could do, if you wanted to dive a little deeper uh, into this niche, you could have a look at every single brand that's being offered by these other sellers and just have a look at their history on Google, for example. Uh, we could have a look at this niche. This is called Long TG. Now, I'm pretty sure that's not a very well-known national baby brand in the UK. I'm sure it's just probably a Chinese seller or something like that. If we type into Amazon, as you can see, you know, there, there's nothing. Nothing comes up on the right. When it's a big brand, something comes up on the right. Here, you'll see the location of the head office. You'll see the stores. You'll see their products in all different retailers all over the country. Like if I type in Nike, for example, uh, this is what you'll see. On the right, you'll see the company with the logo. You'll see their products in all the different stores. You'll see their official website. Um, you'll see the store locations. You know, this means they're a big national brand. Same if you do Mothercare. This is the brand check. You'll see, right? The, the logo here, products in all different stores, uh, loads, of, loads of links, and you can just tell they're a very big brand. I'm pretty sure if we did this check with all of the brands in this niche, you wouldn't really find that information. But you could double check it if you wanted to, to be really clear. What about low hassle? Can we make this thing ourselves? Well, personally, I'm pretty sure I couldn't actually make this uh, because I don't know how to make anything, right? But in theory, the question is, in theory, if we had all the parts, and let's say we had a bit of a skill, 
bit of a skill set. Could we do it? I think yes, potentially I could. Right, I couldn't make a computer, right, or an iPhone, but I could make this because it's a bit of material and a bit of metal or a bit of plastic. It's not overly complicated, it's easy to manufacture. So I'm gonna say yes, in terms of low hassle, yeah, we can make this ourselves. Is it in a low hassle category? Home and kitchen, baby, well it's in baby, so yes, it's a low hassle category. Is it seasonal? Now, the uh, people who are paying attention would have noticed, this is a sunshade. Right, this is literally a sunshade, so this is for when it's really sunny outside and you don't want your baby to get sunburnt, you attach this to the pram. Now, as you know, in the UK, although this summer has been pretty crazy and we've had like two straight months of sun, it's probably going to come to an end. So is this seasonal? Yes. So we're going to put no in the not seasonal checkbox of this, of this uh, cheat sheet. So what are the repercussions of this? Well... If a product is seasonal, and therefore it's not, not seasonal, right, then it is a hassle. Why? Well, because it's only going to sell for a certain amount of time during the year. Whenever the sun comes out, this will sell, and when the sun goes away, it will probably not sell. Except for some people who think ahead and buy one in the winter preparing for the summer, but I, I don't know how often that happens. Um, so it means you're going to have to be very careful with your inventory. The timing of your inventory has to be good. You've got to buy a load probably the end of winter. So in the spring and the summer, and maybe the start of the autumn, you get the sales. And then the winter, you want to make sure you've sold out most of your stock. All right. Or that you haven't overspent because you're not going to be getting cash from that stock throughout the winter. And you, you are going to be charged storage fees. So this is a hassle because you have to think about all that stuff. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't sell the product because it's making someone 83 grand a month right now, so it can make money, but it's not an easy evergreen product that sells all year round that's just going to sit there and make you cash. All right, but I sold seasonal products, my clients sell seasonal products. It's cool, you make money, money's money, right? But it's a bit more hassle, so there's something to bear in mind there. What about the dimensions? Is it small? Is it big? Is it going to be a nightmare to import? Well, it's 28 by 22 by 4.2, and it's 310 grams. So it is small enough to be a low hassle uh, size. So I'm happy with the dimensions. What about the gap in the marketplace? Are there issues with the product? And is there no bundles on page one? Because if there's no bundles, that means you can offer a bundle, and therefore you instantly stand out among the competition. So let's have a look. Are there any bundles? Is anyone offering it with something else? You know, a, a sunshade with a bonus product. Well, I can't see any. I can't see any obvious bundles. If they are bundling, then they've hidden it very well, which is not smart. You should make it obvious. Okay, so this one comes with a bag for the uh, the sunshade, which is the closest thing we have to a bundle. I don't know if you can count it as a bundle if it just comes with a bag because it's just an accessory for the thing. You know, a bundle would be the sunshade plus, I don't know, a toy for your kid, right? Maybe not the best bundle in the universe, but that would be a bundle. Two products that complement each other really well. A bag is almost like an extension of the main product. I wouldn't necessarily count that as a bundle. So I'm going to say there's no bundles on page one. If you offer a bundle, you're instantly separated and you've instantly added more value to the marketplace. What about issues? Are there any issues with the main products that are selling right now? Well, what's the number one bestseller? Let's have a look. Well, it's this one. Snooze Shades product. Are there issues? Let's have a look at the reviews. Obviously lots of people like it. It's reviewed very well. But we want to see if there's some things we can improve on. Let's look at the one star, the two star, the three stars. Pings off repeatedly drives me nuts. So it doesn't secure onto the onto the pram, okay, for that particular person. Not universal. Unfortunately, I had to process a return, a return, a return, right? Struggling to find something similar that can be used, right? Because it doesn't fit on their pram. Fine. Doesn't fit a Nuna. Disappointed. The Velcro straps broke. Okay, so a quality issue doesn't fit the pram. Right, so 
several people have got an issue with it not fitting the pram. Okay, obviously that's really annoying if you bought a product and you, you get it sent to your house, you try and attach it to the pram and it doesn't work, well it's useless. So one way you could improve on this is make it fit every pram. I don't know how you do that, make it more adjustable, uh, make it so you can extend it, close it. I don't know, there's gonna be a way that you can make it fit more prams. Maybe that's the way you can improve on the product. So yes, there are ways we can improve. There are issues with the product we can improve on. All right, so let's get an overview of the niche so we can decide whether you should actually sell this or not. Starting with high demand, well, we've got plenty of 3K sellers. It's well within there. I'd say the demand here is great, right? It's, it's great. It's better than good. It's great. Someone's making 83K a month. You really can't argue with that. So I'm going to give it an um, 17. I was about to say 18. But I'm going to give it 17, to be fair. Out of 20 for high demand. Low competition. Now while filming this I've just noticed there's an extra sneaky established seller that crept in uh, just while I was making this video definitely nothing to do with the fact that I miscounted uh, earlier so we're actually just outside the number of established sellers we want we want five and there's six so for that reason first of all I have to change this to a cross so I'm gonna give it a 10 follow competition because it's okay, it's, it's possible, we can do it, you know. But it's not good and it's not great. It's, it's, it's just below average in terms of le levels of competition. So, being a little harsh there, but I think that's good when you're doing your product research. You want to launch a great product. Hassle. Well, you can make it yourselves. It is low hassle. Good dimensions. But it is seasonal. It's not not seasonal. So again, that's going to cause us issues. I'm actually going to give it a 10 for low hassle. We can definitely make money with it, but it will just be certain months out throughout the year, which is a bit annoying um, overall. Gap in the market, there are issues. Are they major issues? No, um, not major, but there are some issues. Um, and there's no bundle, so there's opportunities to add value here. So for gap, I'm going to give it a 13 out of 20. Finally, hunch. Now, the demand's great. The competition, passable. Low hassle, passable, but not great. And the gap is okay. One redeeming factor in this niche actually is the price point. Because people are charging $32.99, they're charging $25, $23.99. Which actually is promising because it means you can make more profit. Particularly if you're doing whatever these guys are doing. 83k a month. I mean, that really is special. Um, so, although there's issues with this niche, my hunch isn't too bad. I'm going to give the hunch a 14 out of 20. Because although there's issues, there are some really good things about this niche. And you should consider it um, if you're happy to sell seasonal products. One thing some of my clients do is they'll sell, you know, a summer product uh, that's seasonal. And they'll also sell a winter product. So... The portfolio, if you want to call it that, of products is balanced throughout the year. That's one strategy you can actually do if you want to sell seasonal products. A lot of Amazon sellers shy away from seasonal products, which probably means the competition won't creep up too much. Those evergreen products that everybody wants, a lot of Amazon sellers jump on them because they're just so easy, but then the competition increases. So, you know, you've got to take all these things into account. So let's do some maths. And let's add this stuff up and let's give this a score. So 17 plus 10 plus 10 plus 13 plus 14 gives this niche a score of 64 out of 100. Is it the perfect niche? Definitely not. Can you make money with it? 100% if you're okay with seasonality. It's good not to write off products like this. Keep it on your database because you might find a supplier who can give you really good batch of these in January and you could make a lot of money throughout the summer months. And you could use that to launch more evergreen products that will sell all year round. So don't discount products that aren't perfect. Um, if you look at any big Amazon seller, they're not just selling an entire inventory of products that sell all year round. They've got 
hassle products in there, we've got oversized products in there, products that don't make a lot of profit but sell quickly. Um, profit's profit, and if this thing makes you money, it makes you money. So if you want some help researching a smash hit product to sell on your Amazon account, there's links in the description to help you. You can book in a call uh, where we'll come up with a plan, figure out what your goals are with an Amazon business, figure out where you're starting from, and then bridge the gap between where you're starting from and, and where the goals are, and what steps you need to do to get there. Get you some clarity on how to hit your goals. And then if we're a fit to work together, we can talk through how that might work. So click the link in the description, book in your free Amazon Accelerator call. We'll go through that process. And I really hope today's video was, was helpful for you. Hope it up, helped you up your uh, uh, product analysis skills. I can't wait to see you on the next edition of Niche Spotlight. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, and we'll catch up very soon.